All right, so now continuing with fine selections, I selected the white, you know, of this cloud in the sky around this tree. I used the select and mask to soften it. I'm going to use the select and mask again to kind of grow it. I have it set to remember my settings so I can expand it. And now we're going to use some direct adjustment tools that instead of deleting the whole layer, oh, I think I lost the top of that building. Let's see. Instead of deleting the whole layer, um, we can use to bring out certain aspects. So this will be very helpful in these elements. If I want to bring out the darkness of that tree a little bit, but instead of using all levels to do it, because I can try with levels. I can go to image adjustment levels, adjust this whole layer, and kind of push the darks darker, right? But I don't like how that makes all of this super dark. Instead, I just want it in the tree. Then I'm going to use the dodge and burn tools. So they are underneath what looks like a little water droplet, which is a blur tool. It looks like a hand that makes a little circle. That is the burn tool. It's from a dark room. And then the, the dodge tool looks like a little solid lollipop. And these are both based on darkroom tools for working with, with photo paper and enlargers. I'm going to use the burn tool and I'm going to set it in the settings to affect the midtones. Midtones are always the safest to start. I want the exposure to always be less than 30 because these tools are very strong. And then I'm just going to start brushing over these pixels just in this layer, and you see how they're going to darken them. Just in the midtones. Now, I also want to take out the highlights, like those little blues. Instead of trying to erase them all, I can just burn them down, and it will push them more to gray and darken them. And now that tree looks believable on that background, at least up here. Same thing with the really bright edge on the church. I think I have to bring in, somehow I lost, well, let's see, maybe I didn't lose it. No, that church really does have a, an edge like that. So because it's so bright there, this feels weird. So I'm gonna use the dodge tool, take the mid-tones, smaller soft edged brush, and brighten the lip of the, the roof. And that will help. There's some other tools we're going to use that can help too. Same thing with the water tower layer. I'm going to use the burn tool to darken the midtones and the highlights. I can almost make this black so that that shows up better on the background. Now you're safe, relatively safe, as long as you're at an exposure that's less than 30, to burn down your highlights and burn down your midtones. You are not safe burning your shadows because burning your shadows will just make them solid black. And that means you lose pixel information. So for instance, and the shadow of this water tower, if I thought the shadow was too extreme, doesn't match the lighting, I could go to the dodge tool to lighten it up and just go to midtones and kind of lighten within the shadow. In fact, because lightening the midtones kind of doesn't get the shadow edge too much, I can only lighten the shadow. See what that does? Kind of nice. But if I do the opposite and I wanted to darken that shadow, if I use the burn tool to burn shadows, it goes to solid black, meaning I can't get any pixel information back from it. In photography, we call that being uh, overexposed, right? It's gone too dark and you can't get anything back. Now, that is how I can deal with this blue edge, right? As long as it's just the midtones, I can burn that blue edge down 
to darken it, it takes some of the color out and it makes it kind of fit in a little bit better with the image. And if something got too soft, like up here, these got a little soft, I could try using the tool above the dodge and burn tool, which is the blur tool, but I don't want to soften it. Instead, I want to sharpen it. And again, the computer can't sharpen things, but it can detect edges and increase the contrast at the edge. So if I use that with a strength, I would say of no more than 30, because again, it's very strong. You see how that really increases the the contrast at the edges of these things, which helps them appear more in focus. All right. I can try that on a bit of this foreground tree to just sharpen those edges. So let's look at my elements now. And let's go ahead and crop it down close because now I'm pretty committed to this composition. I might give myself a tiny bit more sky. Now, once I crop, Photoshop does lose all the information that's not here. And that saves memory. But it also means I can't now, you know, take something that was over here and put it into the frame. But luckily I have all my references. Okay. I'm going to turn off my guides by hitting command semicolon and then kind of look at my edges. And I don't like that these little thrasher teeth or thresher teeth, I think it's a thresher, are right on the edge. That's distracting. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm simply going to transform it and pull it a little bit in this direction, pull it a little bit in this direction, and then push it off. As long as I don't warp it or make it too extreme, even though it's uh, man-made stuff, that should work. I might also, I don't know, I don't like the top of that church. Brightening it didn't do a whole lot. So maybe I can steal something from another element really quickly. Place that, transform it, make it smaller. This is where you can do quite a bit of compositing. And this relates a little bit to our next assignment where we'll be making creatures. I just want to break the elevation of that a little bit. All right. Do it like that. I want the tower. Maybe that little um, railroad handcart. I don't know. It's always good to get more than you need. See how that's going to fit with what I have. Yeah, okay. So I don't want most of this stuff. I just want that top part. Use my eraser, get rid of those hard edges. Still a 100% eraser. And then let's use the magic wand, put it back to 100%, and then use my eraser on only the selected areas. Let's take this down. Move it down to the roof line. And this is where I can show you a new lasso. So instead of the freeform lasso, I can use the polygonal lasso, which you just click. It's 
It's good for really sharp edges. You click at the points and it will give you straight line shapes. So really good for buildings and kind of geometry as long as they're simple enough. I can just erase away this way. You always have to close the shape though before you delete. I can get away with this. Kind of look too weird. Yep. I think all I need is take this out of it. So these are fun little problem solving tasks you can do. <laughs> Learning some architecture here. I'm going to have to uh, fill that in and I'll show you a tool for that because we're all about refining our our layers now. Bring that straight down. So I kind of like, I kind of miss that now. Let's see. No. Okay. And now that soft eraser. Can use to kind of transition it and I can play with its levels to darken the midtones, to limit the highlights, that's going to help a lot. And I've got to clear out uh, the blues in the little skylight here because that is not what's behind it. So I'm just going to cut those out. And I guess soften them. very subtly, so knock these back. The cropping really helps this go a little bit faster because this tool can take a while to process. All right, and then maybe even burn it a little to help it sink in. But I just added a nice part to that building so that it's a little more, more pleasing to the eye. And then I can even just take its opacity down a tiny bit to help blend it even more. And I think I'm going to use the polygonal lasso. To seam the roof lines. So I want that, but I'm going to erase it at a low opacity because <laughs> I still want some of that shadow. There we go. So that is compositing. <laughs> now, now I'm not really sold on this glacier, right? Because this looks a lot more believable. There's also a fancy that. But yeah, we got to have the fantasy in there. So the problem with the glacier is it's just at a slightly wrong angle. You still need to add your popsicle. I do have the popsicle, but it was it was out of focus. So that's a problem. So maybe I can use just this part of the popsicle. So this is where you know I want you to have fun, try out different things, see what you can do. So instead, I'm going to make my own glacier out of this popsicle. I'm going to grab a bunch of it that's mostly in focus. Duplicate it, turn off the smart layer, turn it on, oops, turn it on its side, Command T. Because it's organic, I can warp it, kind of make it its own thing, as long as I don't make it too huge. 